let's look at the strategy of the game. Now, as soon as I break the balls, or it's my shot, say my opponent breaks the balls and I get up to the table, the first thing I'm looking for is, number one, do I have a shot? And number two, are the balls open enough for me to run the table? So depending on your speed or ability, that may look a little different to you than it does to me. But let's say in a situation like this rack, okay, the balls are, are fairly open except for I see the four and eight in this area right in here. Now, these two balls are tied up, and the four really doesn't have anywhere to go. So the first thought I would have would be play the one in the corner, play the two, play the three, and try and position the cue ball, hopefully in an area like this, where I could just kind of hit the four and stop the cue ball behind the eight, something like this manner. So you have to make the determination if you can run the table, then you can elect to do that. Or if it looks like a game where something is tied up, maybe the seven and the four or the two and the six or whatever, if you see that after you break, then what you should try and do is play position on a safety instead of taking a chance trying to either break the balls out or give your opponent an easy shot. So if you keep that in mind, I think you're going to win a lot more games when you have an opportunity and you win a lot more games when you can fool your opponent by playing some kind of a safety. So always keep that in mind. Now, the most important thing to remember, and I can't stress this enough, is you must hit the one solid. Meaning that, let's imagine a line through the object ball, in this case the one, and the cue ball. That's our imaginary line. What we're doing is visualizing hitting the one about in this area. Now, let's say I move the cue ball eh, to the center of the spot right here. Now we're hitting the one dead straight on. And if we move the cue ball, let's say, over here, now we're hitting the one a little bit to this side. You always have to remember to hit the ball solid. Now, a lot of times, how many times you've seen a guy, they get up and look like they're winding up to hit the balls 500 miles an hour, but what happens is they take these big strokes and they hit. They may be stroking and hitting hard, but they're only catching a piece of the one ball. So what I find is that I normally try and hit the balls maybe 70 to 80% as hard as I know I can hit them and try and hit the one solid. The more solid I hit the one, then I start adjusting my speed, hitting a little harder, a little harder, a little harder, until I get 100% maximum uh, capability. Let's look at how I decide whether to take solids or stripes. That's going to be your most important choice in a game of eight ball. Now, the first thing I look at, as we see the table, I put the rack down here to show where the balls would be racked up. Okay, the very first thing I look for, it's, it's not doesn't happen an awful lot, but it does, especially on a four and a half by nine. You see these two balls up here. Now immediately, for, I don't even care how the rest of the rack looks, I would pick solids only for the simple reason that I know I can pocket the five ball in this corner pocket a lot easier. Let's say I can position the cue ball anywhere in this area, almost anywhere here to play the five in here, as opposed to playing the 11 in this pocket. Cue ball must get right in this area, and it's very tough for my opponent to get into this position. So right here immediately, this would be the first thing I'd key at. You see two balls and one of them goes easily in the other one, that would be my automatic choice. I don't care how the rest of the balls go because I know my opponent must bank the 11 or whatever to get out. Same situation over here. Now we have the side rail, and this may come up a little bit more. You see the 15 ball, I would immediately pick stripes because the six ball, the only way to make it is either bank it cross sides or cross corner. Even if my opponent gets absolutely perfect on it, it's still a low percentage shot. So therefore, I would immediately pick stripes over anything else. That would be my second choice. This would be my first, this would be my second. Now, let's look at this situation. In this case, I would probably like to take the solid balls because I can possibly play the one, bank it, or if something's off the rail, let's say like this, I could play the one up in here, and I can easily play the seven in this corner pocket. 13 is trapped. Again, my opponent must bank the 13 ball. The fourth choice looks good, but really isn't. Keep in mind, a hanging ball is nice, except if your opponent can pocket your ball using one of his, and then hang his ball and tie your ball up. And last but not least, when there's clusters, if all the solids are pretty much open, and the stripe balls, let's say, are in a big cluster here or wherever, I would go with the solids. So this is how I determine which balls to take, stripes or solids. Now, straight pool is related a lot to eight ball and nine ball. You can use a lot of different techniques in this game for any of the other games. Straight pool is by far the best game to learn because it teaches you basic strategy, how to play the right position, 
Many, many different things come up. How to break out clusters, all that is covered in straight pool. And probably most of the greatest players that have ever played the game all grew up playing straight pool. Once you learn how to play this game, you can play any other game. Now, let's look at what we call patterns. Now, there are endless and endless amounts of what we call patterns, how we pick the balls off in straight pool or eight ball or any game. Let's look at an example like this. Now, here the cue ball, let's say I broke the balls up and I had a nice break shot and the balls are open like this. Now I'm looking maybe the seven ball could possibly be a break shot for my next rack. I'm already thinking ahead. But how do I pick the balls off? I have many shots. I could play the 12 in the corner, 13 in here, the eight in that pocket, the 14, five in the corner. There's many, many different shots. So what I try and do is I try and always float the cue ball or position the cue ball in an area where I have the best results. Meaning, if I shot a ball, I'd like to try and wind, wind up in an area, say something like this, where I have my choice of either playing the 13, playing the 8, or playing the 14. But what's most important is that when I'm in this area, I try and pick off all these balls before I go to another area. Meaning, I could play, let's say I played the 8 or I could play the 13, but I can play them anywhere. I may play the 13, let's say that goes in, and I'm right here. Now maybe I'll play the 14, maybe the 10 in this pocket, the 10 in that pocket, or I could draw back for maybe the eight. Just so long as when I'm done in this area, these balls are off the table. Now, here again, let's, we have a rail break shot, but this time behind the rack. Now, I showed you some side of the rack break shots. The one thing to remember, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but every time on every break shot we've shown so far, every time I go into the pile, I always go into the pile on an angle. That also includes little clusters of balls, which we're going to cover a little bit later on. Meaning that if I have a shot like this, let's say, if I shoot the five in and the cue ball comes up and just hits it straight into the rack, more than likely I'll freeze or stick behind the pile with no shot. So I must always try and go into the pile on an angle slight angle. So in this particular case, if the five, in this case the break shot, is in this area, pretty much even with the corner of the rack, or even somewhere in this area, I normally draw the cue ball, hit it low with a little bit of left English. And what happens is we hit our shot and the cue ball is going to hit the cushion, come up and just graze some of the corner balls, hitting the cushion and then coming out with speed to the center of the table. So that looks like this. We're not trying to hit it real hard, just hard enough to break the balls up a little bit. Low left English. And as you can notice, I open up some of the balls. I have a nice shot on the 12, the 2, 3 ball. And there are some break shots open up. So remember, you don't have to hit the shot real hard. Just remember to come into the rack on an angle. Okay, let's look at another angle of this particular shot. Now you see again, here's our ball on the rail. Now, just a shot before this, our object ball was in this area. I drew it with a little bit of left English. Now let's put the object ball in this area. Now we're almost even with this corner ball, and the cue ball is in this position. This time what we want to do is follow the cue ball with a little bit of right English, meaning we're hit it with right English. Cue ball is going to hit the rail and go into the rack on this angle, this time trying to catch the last two balls in this area with speed to the rail and hopefully out again. So that looks like this. As you can notice, the cue ball hit the rack on a slight angle and drifted towards the side rail. Now, again, the speed is very important. If you hit that shot too hard, many times you'll hit the rail and come back into the pile. So all you want to do is float over here, and again, we have some shots, the one, the nine. Just as long as we spread out the balls, that's mainly what we're trying to do. We're not trying to break the balls all over the table. 